Our goal is to find the volume, surface area, and arc length of this vase using integral calculus. And to start off, we plug the values from the graph into the list on our calculator, which we then used to calculate a quadratic regression for the bell-shaped part. And as you can see, it's a very nice fit. We created a data table to show each segment that was broken up by the grid lines of the graph. And that looks like that. First off, we found the volume of the base by doing a piecewise function of the two integrals. First, after the quadratic regression, we plugged in the bell-shaped curve integral and then we put added it to the cylinder integral in order to find the volume. After we found this, it happened to be 7988.73 units and our scale on this is 1 unit equals 0.34 millimeters or centimeters. So after that, we multiplied the number by 0.34 to the third and we got 313.989 centimeters cubed. In order to find the surface area of our vase, we needed to do two integrals, one for the cylindrical portion and one for the bell-shaped portion on the end. And they were too big to solve by hand using the u-substitution method. So we uh, did it on the calculator, and it gives us 1813.7 units squared, which we then need to multiply by 0.34 squared because it's square units and our scale factor is 0.34. So that gives us 209.66 centimeters squared, which we then need to add the bottom of the vase because that is not depicted in our calculus. So we used the equation pi r squared, which is Pi, and then our radius on here is 8 units, so we do 8 times 0.34 to scale it appropriately, and then square that. It gives us 23.24, so we add 23.24 to the 209.66, and that gives us 232.9 square centimeters. Next up is the surface area, or the arc length of the vase, and in order to do that, it was actually pretty easy compared to the other two steps. We took the integral of the bell-shaped curve and just added 28 because this is just a straight line and it's 28 units long. So when we did that, we got 28 plus 6.58 for the arc, and that equals 34.58, and then we had to multiply 34 by... 0.58 times 0.34 in order to get it to scale and that is 11.76 centimeters long. Right now I'm just going to shove this thing in there and just be like, yeah, water displacement. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Does anyone else have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go so bad. <laughs> Drop my phone. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Yes, it's during school hours. He's hot. Time to get a drink. Drop that in there. That was pretty Wait till it's not. It's not even 300. Oh, who's right? Not Nato. Nato's right. Oh! <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna go. <laughs> so, alright, hold up. Right about 310! <laughs> For the project, we decided to use the calculus as a, as a theoretical 
because when we did our quadratic regression, as you can see, our R squared is 0 0.9976, which is extremely close, and one is the most accurate you can get. Also, our graph fit very well on to, to fit close and give us a nice accurate scale to what it actually is. And we just felt that the volume of the the vase could be affected by the air bubbles when we put it put it in the water displacement method, so we felt that it wouldn't be as accurate. Oh yeah, also Chuck Norris said so. When we calculated our percent error, we took the 310 cubic centimeters we got from our water displacement test and subtracted the 313.989 centimeters cubed we got from the calculus method and multiplied by 100 to get negative 1.27%, which is a pretty good percent error.